Hello everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about how to value a startup without revenue. So really figuring out the valuation of a company is an art. They're going to be expecting you to have that, you know, on the investor side, on the potential acquirer side. Uh, but really startups, especially when they're born, they have no revenue. So really in today's video, we're going to be walking you through the different methods of valuing a startup and to really understand what could be that price tag on your business so that you're able to make deals the right way and in your own way. So with that being said, let's get into it. So why is the valuation so important for startups? Look, at the end of the day, you are going to go into fundraising rounds or perhaps your company at one point is going to be acquired. And for that reason, either the investor or the company that is acquiring you needs to understand what is the price tag and the value of your business so that they can pay you in the form of stock or in the form of cash. That's for the acquisitions. For the investors, essentially they would be investing money and receiving in exchange equity ownership in your business. Now, another thing or another area of why the valuation is so important is because essentially it gives you credibility. It gives you credibility towards the market. I mean, you're going to be seeing all the time on the press that company X or company Y has raised X amount of money at X amount of valuation. And that is essentially telling the market that there is a credible source that has come in, maybe a credible investor or whoever that is, for example, on the investment side that has come in, has really made an investment at a certain value. And since they are sophisticated investors, is telling the world that your company is valued at that amount. So the traditional way of valuing startups is really the EBITDA, is the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So essentially what this means is that you are going to be putting a multiple or that, you know, whatever value you put on top of that, but it's like buying a paying dividend stock or perhaps a real estate property that is very straightforward stuff. Now, the thing is that most startups almost, I mean, if I would have to say like, all of them, maybe there's some exceptions where there's like a spin-off of a big corporation into a smaller uh, entity, but all of the startups, they essentially start with absolutely zero revenue. So in this case, you're going to have to come up with non the traditional types of uh, valuation for startups, but really going to the other methods that are going to help you to understand what essentially is the price tag that you want to put in your business. Now you need to remember that whenever you are going to negotiate, maybe you're going out to raise a round of financing or you're going out to sell your business or you're speaking with potential acquirers, they're going to ask you for your valuation. And here's the thing, you never want to talk first because if you talk first, you're going to lose. What I mean with this is that whenever they ask you for a valuation, if you actually make the mistake of giving the valuation first, they are always going to negotiate you down. So for that reason, you want to put it on their court. You want to try to have them speak first, drop a number first, and then you negotiate them up. The first method to value a company is the Berkus method. And essentially this method is going to be focusing on the following factors. The business idea, having a prototype, strength of the management team, strategic relationships, having rolled out a product or starting sales. So this method is actually a great one for pre-revenue startups, but essentially you need to really go back and add the values that are assigned specifically to those factors that we outlined. The next is going to be the scorecard method. And essentially what this method does is really compares against other companies that may be at your same stage or maybe in your same location or in your same segment and essentially is going to be relying on the following factors to put a value to the business. The strength of management, the size of the opportunity, the product or the technology, the competitive environment, marketing and sales, need for additional capital, miscellaneous factors. The next one is going to be the venture capital method. 
And essentially the, the venture capital method, what it does is really all focusing into the future, the possibility, the potential. And they are really focusing on the projections, on those three or five year projections, and really putting a return or a potential multiple into that. And essentially that's how they come with the price tag and with the valuation for your business. The next is the Chicago method. And essentially the Chicago method, it really focuses on the cash flow. It's going to really have the best case, the worst case, and the base case a scenario, uh, depending on what's going to be the outcome and the potential scenarios. But again, all around cash flow. Then you're going to have the risk summation factor as a, as a way to value. And here, what it's going to look at is different factors, and depending on where you're at, it's going to extract value from the actual number that it's actually that it's coming up with as a result of this exercise. So some of these factors are the following: a potential exit, reputation, international, litigation, technology, competition, funding, sales and marketing, manufacturing, legislation. Stage of the business, management. So there is actually different ways that you can use to actually increase the valuation of your company much quicker, especially when you're in the process or in the middle of really getting that deal done. So those are the following. Presenting much better. So one of the things that I see all the time is that when you are doing the presentation, you really need to nail it on storytelling because many of those investors are really investing in the future, in the possibility of your business. So by really nailing it on the storytelling where you're really narrating what's happening, what are you tackling, the why, the what, the how, people are going to get really excited to really jump in and come in with you and it could get to a point where price is not an issue. They just want to be in. And that essentially happens when you really master storytelling, when you have a lot of people that are interested in jumping in, and essentially you get oversubscribed really quickly on your round of financing, which means that you don't have enough space for everyone that wants to participate, and that's the way that you're gonna be pushing the value up. You need to start selling. So if you really believe that the revenue is something that is pulling you down on the valuation side, you need to get out there, you need to really close customers, large accounts, whatever that is, to really continue to move the needle forward. Because essentially, that traction, that progress around the sales, around the revenue, is going to help to understand that that investor, or perhaps that acquirer, that essentially you are heading in the right direction and maybe there's different multiples that they can use around your valuation. Get your MVP or product right away. Because essentially when you have that product out, when you're getting feedback, when you're getting data points from the market where you can showcase that progress, that people are really into your product or service, that it's flying off the shelves, you can essentially use that as a way to really tell the investor that what's coming, it's really big. And it's going to create that excitement and that fear of missing out because they're really going to believe that if they don't jump in, then their ticket is going to be much, much more expensive down the line. You should also recruit A plus talent, the best talent, because ultimately if you have good, good people that are involved in your business, in the execution, that is going to be a plus and it's going to increase that potential valuation that the investor is giving you because it's not just about the product or the service, it's also about the people that are behind it. So if you have people that have done it before, that have really good bios, good CVs, essentially you're going to be able to use that as a way for leverage to increase the overall valuation of the business. Another way of doing this is to really position yourself against other, other potential players, competitors, either direct or indirect, because you can go into the meeting and the investor could tell you, I think that your valuation is X, but you can hit them back and say, look, I understand, but right now the market, you need to know that it's paying between X and Y based on our research and what we've seen some of the companies out there that are either directly competing or indirectly competing. So essentially, when you tell them what is the middle of the valuation in that range, it's going to be very hard for that investor or perhaps for that acquirer to really negotiate you on the number. So that's going to be a very good way to just finish and really dip it in, nip it in the, in the, in the bucket. 
So uh, with that being said, I hope that you like this video. Make sure that you leave a comment and let me know what you're thinking and what you're dealing with with your valuation, with the valuation of your business. Also like this video and then also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And take a look at the fundraising training, which is the program where we help entrepreneurs every step of the way from A to C in fundraising. There you'll find live Q&A sessions. You also find access to templates, agreements, a community of founders helping each other all over the world, and you'll find tremendous value in it. So thank you so much for watching.